Hey, before the video started, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everyone who voted for one of the final list videos that I was going to do over on my Discord. I got a lot of reception for it, a lot of people voted, I had quite a few suggestions on there, and this was the video that you guys chose, so hope you enjoy it. This goes out to you. You guys get it? Because disappointments? You get it? <laughs> hey, review family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, a review guy, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be doing my top five most disappointing albums of 2018. They can't all be good, and this is separate from my list in which I was talking about my least favorite albums of 2018. I'll go ahead and link that in the end screen, but these are the top five albums that really let me down for one reason or another. It could be an expectation or some hype that was built around one of these albums that went completely unfulfilled or majorly unfulfilled. And of course, you may love some of these albums. These may be some of your favorite albums of the year, and if they are, you can go ahead and leave them below. Below. I am super open to hearing discussion and different things about that. Number five, Ghost Album Prequel, my most disliked video on the channel. I get that a lot of people are giving this kind of universal critical acclaim just like their previous work, and I understand Ghost is a very important band, and I am not discrediting them at all. I really did enjoy their album Meliora, and I enjoy a lot of their earlier work. Prequel for me just felt way too over the top, way too overblown, and way too theatrical by my standards, and that is just my standards. I get a lot of people really dug into this album, really Really enjoyed this album and loved it as much as Meliora. Some people are even loving it more than Meliora. This just was not an album that really tickled my fancy and got me involved or interested and I was bored with it very fast and it grew very tiresome very fast. Number four is Joji's album Ballads 1. You will be surprised by this because I gave this a pretty above average, pretty good score and I did enjoy some of the songs on this album and yet it still seemed a bit ungratifying and unsatisfying for me. I have never been a fan of Joji's music, nor have I been a fan of the Filthy Frank music. Sometimes it would have some neat gimmicks, but it was nothing that I was really interested in hearing a full project from. Much like his debut EP in Tongues, I feel like Joji Field Ballads 1 with some decent ideas that were poorly executed. From cliche lyrical themes to very overdone styles that are being done by so many people that it makes it hard to set him apart from a lot of the competition he's up against. Overall, I hope that Joji gets better at what he's doing. I do think 88 Rising is a very interesting label and I'm curious to see what they're doing with a lot of their artists. And I think that Joji has room to evolve and to grow as an artist and I hope to see that going forward. But for the most part, Ballads 1 had a lot of the same inconsistencies and mixed bag properties that In Tongues had. This one hurts. Number three is XXX Tentacion's album Skins. Yeah, it dropped in December 2018 and it made the list. And I don't place the blame on X whatsoever. This is just a sad, sad situation. I really wish that it would have been better, but what do you expect when you're releasing a posthumous album that barely qualifies as a mixtape or an EP, cobbling together instrumentation, reversing beats from popular songs, and getting X's vocals unprocessed properly mixed, basically sounding like demos. You know, I would love to get in the headspace of whoever made this album. It has to be about money. They're just wanting to money pinch and be frugal and get every little last dime they can off of X's name before he falls a little bit out of relevancy from the public eye. And as long as they're releasing music, he's going to be in the public eye. People are going to be talking about it. People are going to be watching it. If there's music videos, people are going to be putting that up on trending. It is going to get tons of views and likes just because of the figure that X was and the fact he was a good artist. But this is not the X that I enjoy. Question Mark made my end year list. That was a really good album, but Skins just wasn't, and it was a massive letdown, even if I wouldn't have had the biggest expectations going into it as is. Next up is Between the Buried and Me's Automata Cycle that released last year. They did part one and part two. 
I think this should have been a singular album, and I think it probably should have been shorter. And I know that's strange to say. It should have been shorter by Between the Buried and Me standards. I did not really enjoy these albums as much as I wish I would have. And this falls into the category of things that really let me down and left my expectations unfulfilled. I love Between the Buried and Me. I think they're fantastic. They're a fantastic band. Super technically efficient and really great songwriters. But this just did not live up to the hype that I wish it would have. This album just doesn't have the same spice that makes me like some of their earlier material. And there's not really much more to say than that because part one feels kind of weak by Between the Buried and Me standards and part two did a little bit more than that but it still doesn't feel like it's living up to what Between the Buried and Me are truly capable of. And without a doubt number one has to be Pig Destroyer's album Head Cage. These guys used to be one of the best grindcore bands. They were one of the best of the best. They were the highest echelon. They were part of this other wave that came about in like the 90s and the 2000s. You had classics like Prowler in the Yard and Book Burner. Such great releases that really made so much sense for the grindcore genre and brought it up to a new level of brutality and technical efficiency where bands like Napalm Death were really revolutionizing it in the 80s and 90s. Pig Destroyer took that, ran with it, built on it, and became gods of it, basically. And it baffles me, it absolutely baffles me that they went in this direction when they have such a fan base built around something that they are fully capable of doing. They've done it for a lot of albums. It was not a one-time stop. It was not a random occurrence. It wasn't a perfect session in the studio. These guys have been releasing great music for so long. They've released so many classic albums in the grindcore genre. It baffles me that they would have descended into just mundane, mediocre, status quo, stereotypical death metal. Are there a couple tracks that have grindcore tendencies? Of course. But at the end of the day, this is just brutal death metal, basically. And sometimes it sounds almost like metalcore. Metalcore. Pig Destroyer. It's sad. It really disappointed me as an album. And it was above average. It was listenable. But if it would have been like the earlier stuff, I probably would have given it a much better score and review. But other than that, there's really not much more I could say about this album. So what were your most disappointing albums of 2018? You can go ahead and post in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys next time. But until then, my name is Jay Morse, a review guy. And I'm signing off saying farewell.